Welcome to the Focus Forward with Robin Show, where you think a thing, believe a thing, and achieve a thing. Hi, everybody. This is your girl, Robin Shockley, with Focus Forward with Robin on the go. You never know where I'm going to be. I'm here today with Miss Quinetta Davis. She is the author of Targeted at Birth. I am so glad you came all the way down from Charlotte, North Carolina to do an exclusive interview with me about your why story. I am glad to be here. Yes. Well, Miss Quinetta, tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are today. Okay. I am the author of the book, Targeted at Birth. I just got into my actress career. I am doing filming now. I am continuing to save the youth. Um, when I say save the youth, I focus more so on the youth because I was a youth when a lot of things happened to me that I wrote about in my book. But I am open to helping any and everybody that needs to get out of these type of situations. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, you're married. I am. You're married and you have children. I do and I have one granddaughter. Oh, how awesome. That's wonderful. Well, you seem to be put all together and you're living your best life and you're doing great, but life hasn't always been great for you. Oh no, not at all, not yeah. at all. So this book that you have wrote, Targeted at Birth, where did this title come from and what is it about? Um, it was easy for me to come up with the title because I've always felt like I had an attack on my life. Um, but my attack just, just wasn't from everybody all over, anybody that I came in contact mm -hmm. with. My attack was from somebody that was very close to me right inside of the home that I grew up in. So I felt like, you know, I never had a fair chance at having a great childhood. So I couldn't think of no other name better than Targeted at Birth. Wow, man, that pretty goes deep because if it comes from the inside of where you live, where it's supposed to be your safety net, where it's supposed yeah. to be your comfort, you know, and to know that you feel like you've been betrayed and you were targeted at birth. Um, let's kind of break that down, targeted at birth. Tell us some of the things that you've been through um, in your childhood. Um, the uh, the name calling, being called, being told I'll never be nothing, you know, I'm, I'm just a liar, just to paint a picture of me so that when stories come out or when things are told, no one will believe what I would say. That's why I'm here today, to let you know that you still have to tell your truth. Whether you think somebody is going to believe it or not, it has to come out. It's better out than in because for me, I held it in for so many years. I suffered through uh, depression and anxiety for so many years. Secretly, a lot of my friends, when I relocated to Charlotte, North Carolina, didn't even know what I was battling with. I kept it in and I stayed angry all the time because I never had an outlet uh, to let someone know that I, what I was going through. Of course, people seen it, adults and everything, but I felt like I got more attention from the adults that was at the school that I attended, the alternative school that I was put in when things got crazy for me and I just wanted a way out. So um, someone's always listening. So did you, when you were a child and you were going through these insecurities and the anxiety and depressions, did you lash out? I mean, in anger, were you ever in fights or anything like that? Was Or did you just hold all that animosity inside of you? I fought a lot, uh, but I made it seem like it was about something else. Every mm -hmm. time I got in a fight, I put it off on something else. Mm -hmm. But I had so much anger inside of me to mm -hmm. that was my only way of getting it out. Another way of me getting it out was to try to end my own life. So wow. the first time I tried to uh, end my life, I took pills at the age of, I was 16 going on 17. Wow. Okay. So, oh man, that's such a young age. But to when you were a child and you went through all these difficulties and such, and then you're going through your teenage years and wanting to give your life up, you know, and taking a bottle of pills, that's pretty drastic. I can relate to that. I took a bottle of pills too when I was very young. And so, um, and I was actually married when I did it. And so, but to know, we hear about abuse that goes on in the home, the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, physical abuse, all these things that go on in the home. And we automatically think it has to do with a spouse. Yep. And in your case, it was not a spouse. Can you tell us a little bit about that? No, it was, no, it wasn't a spouse at all. It was never, I, I can say that I've never been abused by a man. Verbally little, but I don't, I didn't let it go on too long because of what I've been through in my past. Mm -hmm. So I always made my exit as soon as things got a little rocky or shaky for me. So no, it wasn't a spouse. It wasn't a male, period. It was the woman who birthed me. 
the you woman know? who birthed you. Yes. Your mother. I, yes, absolutely. And I looked up to her. I gave her everything she wanted, even as I grew older. It wasn't nothing I wouldn't do for her until this day. I still love my mother dearly, mm -hmm. but I felt like this was my only way out. This was the only closure that I'm going to get from my situation, and I'm okay with it. What are some of the things that you, because there are going to be people that are watching this and they could be going through this right now, or they could be dealing with the aftermath of everything that happened, such as yourself. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, you know, you don't have to go in detail, but some of the situations that you have faced to, to cause this, because we don't just have anxiety and depression and want to kill ourselves you know, over nothing. There's a root cause of it. And there's things and situations and experiences that we have faced that cause us to get in that position. Are you liberated to share anything? You don't have to go in detail, but some of the situations that maybe somebody could relate to that could be watching. I will say for me, it was the name calling, being told I was never good enough secretly or, you know, being talked about to other adult family members, losing all of my confidence inside of the room when I walk in. It's just like, I didn't have any confidence. Every time I would go around family functions, when I try, once I did run away from it, from it mm -hmm. when I try to go back around family functions, I already knew that I was talked about. I was put down. This lie was put out on me. That lie was put out on me. And I was young at the time. So that's the type of stuff that a lot of young children cannot deal with, mm -hmm. especially when it's coming from somebody that you love. That is very hurtful. Other things that took place is, you know, I was just the chosen one to do a lot of things cover up a lot of secrets a lot of affairs uh you know between people and other men you know and, and i had to be the chosen child to go and witness a lot of things that went on that a child should never have witnessed okay you talk about you were the chosen child you were the chosen child to because how many siblings did you have I have one brother that passed away in 2001. I have mm -hmm. one brother um, that's still living, and I have two sisters. Wow. So we're talking about your story today. We're talking about the things that you've been through and the experiences you've been through and the feelings. Because what I love about it is that when somebody comes on the show, or any show for that matter, and they tell their story, it is their story right mm -hmm. and you already said you loved your mother very much but they were just some things that you couldn't tolerate and you're still going through you know the healing process of, of, of coping with it and if anybody wants to find out the details of it you can get your copy of her book so back to your story so how did you when you gave yourself up and and said life is just over taking a bottle of pills and saying i'm done with it as a teenager when did you finally say and how old were you when you said enough is enough there's got to be purpose or whatever it is or when did you even discover that there was purpose in your life i always knew there was purpose in my life i always knew that i was better than i was ever told uh, because I have a great father. I have a great father that has always been a part of my life. And people like to ask questions like, where was your father when all of this was going on? Well, we're talking about a man who truly cared about his kids and his family. So my father was gone a lot, working countless hours. So a lot of things that took place with me, he wasn't there for it. And like I say, I was told to be quiet about it or, you know, being told that, you know, if you say something about it, you know, your dad is crazy. He's going to flip out and you won't see him again. That's not something that I wanted as a kid. I felt like I needed my father. Wow. So I held a lot of stuff in. I kept a lot of secrets and I dealt with that for many years because I felt like I betrayed it, my father. Mm -hmm. I, I prayed that he would forgive me. I prayed that when Anything will come out about anything that I went through and I didn't tell him. I prayed that he would understand my why. And he definitely did understood it. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So you decided, what age again were you when you left? Um, I was about 22 years old when I left. Um, I'll be 40. Okay. All so. Right. so you just, you took that jump and it all cost because that's what it was. It cost you. Oh, yeah. Because um, you had said something about maybe you had lost some people that you were really close to that were in your life that you felt connected to. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah. they pulled away. Once you came out and started telling your story and you wrote the book, Targeted at Birth, um, when you wrote this story and you came out, you know, sharing your story of mm -hmm. your truth, you know, the people that you were close to, how did that affect you? 
um, at first I kept quiet about it because I was uh, I was a little nervous about telling my story as anybody would be because you know that the consequences of telling your story and telling your truth, the backlash of it all, you don't know if somebody's going to believe you. You don't know if family is going to attack you. And I, I got it. I, I got it. I knew I would get it, but that didn't stop me. So um, I did lost, a, I would say, a good bit of family uh, behind this book. You know, some secretly congratulate me and don't want to talk about it publicly. At the end of the day, they're still protecting the narcissist feelings, not mine. My feelings were still shut out. Everybody was still trying to protect someone's feelings who they thought that I was just trying to bash and take down, but that's never my MO. I'm not ever trying to hurt nobody or take anybody down or just put somebody out there on blast. I told my truth. This was healing for me. Yes. Oh, that's very important. So if there are women that are out here and you're watching this or a man, you can even be a man um, or a teenager or a young person, or even you could be in your senior years um, that's out here and they need to know that it's okay to speak your truth, to tell your story. And what can you say to um, somebody that could be watching this that may be afraid maybe to get out there and speak because they're scared they're going to lose relationships? What would you say to encourage them to focus forward? Ah. Uh. It's okay. It's okay. Everybody is not meant to be in your life forever. Mm -hmm. Whoever told you that just because you're born into a family that every family member is going to always be there for you. Everybody may not agree with the way you put things out there, mm -hmm. but it's still your story to tell. You're not hurting anybody by telling what happened to you or what you've been through or, you know what I mean? So I knew that I would lose a lot of people. And I just didn't care. At that point, I just didn't care anymore because I needed to get it out. I was mm. slipping back into depression. I was slipping back into anxiety. You know, at one point, people see me now and consider me as the life of the party. At one point, I couldn't even walk inside of a room and had no confidence. I thought I was ugly. I thought I wasn't pretty enough. Wow. You know, I was always told I was retarded like my daddy. <laughs> that was always my little thing. So every time I heard that, that was a trigger point for me. That don't move me no more. Yeah. It don't move me and it stopped moving me long time wow. ago. But now that I've spoken my truth and I've told my story, I'm going to yeah. keep on talking because I saw how it healed me. Amen. I see how it's still healing me. Yes. So I'm going to keep on talking and saving and help and doing everything I can. So how can people get a copy of your book, Targeted Birth? Because there's details in here of her life story. She shares her experiences and she shares her truth and her emotions and how she coped and how she overcome. So how can they get a copy of this? You can find my book, Targeted at Birth by Quinetta Davis on Amazon. All right. Guys, this has been such an amazing interview. I cannot wait to get my copy of her book to dig in to read it. This is your girl, Robin Shockley, with Focus Full with Robin. You never know where I'm going to be. I'm here with the amazing Quinetta Davis. She is not only um, an author, she's also an actress, and she's caring a lot for people, taking care of people in the community and in her position of her job. And, you know, always remember, if you think a thing, you believe a thing. If you believe a thing, you will achieve it, just like Quinetta's doing here today. Y'all be blessed. Have a good one. Do you have a story that you want to tell? Whether it is your brand of your business or whether it's your personal why story of your success, reach out to your girl Robin Shockley at www.robinshockley.com. I'll be glad to submit your information on my show. Contact me for price and packages as well as more information on how you can get publicized. www.robinshockley.com.